Hello everybody, welcome back once again to the Final Fantasy VII walkthrough. Uh, we are just about to take on the first uh, major boss, I guess, of the game. Uh, if I can remember what this guy's name is, the Guard Scorpion, apparently. And, um, alright, so we, we actually just grabbed the, uh, the first... Well, I don't know if you can really consider it the first material. The first obtainable material? How about that? Uh, of the game. And that's the restore. We're not actually going to be able to equip that until a bit later. Um, once once the materia tutorial takes place. Um, so, yeah, I guess keep in mind that we've got that. But um, I don't know what this was here. Watch out. This isn't just a reactor. I don't know if that's a, that was supposed to be a voice in Cloud's head. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that was all about. Or if that was a flashback. I kind of feel like it was a flashback, but I don't remember right off the top of my head. Again, it's been, uh, gosh, actually, it's been quite a few years since I've played this, so I am super rusty on the, uh, the storyline. But uh, anyways, all right, so we are at the reactor. Uh, Barrett actually apparently doesn't trust Cloud uh, enough to, I don't know, set the set the explosive so I, I don't which doesn't make sense at all there it says I'm gonna watch you do it so actually I almost kind of kind of feel like maybe Barrett doesn't know what he's doing I don't know that's my take I could be wrong on that but that's kind of what it feels like but uh, all right anyways as far as the guard scorpion really really easy battle here there is one thing though to keep in mind uh, at a certain point, and I don't know if it's uh, based on the amount of turns or um, the HP total of this thing, I'm not sure, uh, but uh, at a certain point, it's going to raise its tail up into the air, and um, if you attack it uh, while its tail is up in the air, it will counterattack with some sort of laser or something like that. Um, I, If I remember correctly, it's like a multi-target, but uh, don't quote me on that. I don't, I don't I actually remember. Uh, but um, it does hit pretty hard, so uh, again, keep that in mind, I guess. Uh, and again, you know, just just don't attack it when its tail is up in there. That's uh, that's the best I can say. The the most dangerous thing about it is so there here it's it's uh, it just raised its tail just now, and um, if I would have been you know hitting the attacks, uh, you know, I, I could have actually messed up. Uh, but being that I knew it was coming, I kind of just held back on attacking. But um, I, I get, it's it's kind of uh, it's hard to describe it, but it kind of reminds me of like Final Fantasy III, just because of the way the ATB system works. Uh, th sorry, Final Fantasy III or Final Fantasy VI, however you want to say it. But um, there's there's often attacks in uh, you know actually other uh, Final Fantasy games that kind of work the same way, where you know the the boss will do something, and then if you attack it, um, you'll get counterattack. So again. Uh, the Final Fantasy VI reference here would be like the, the very, actually I believe it's the very first boss, uh, the Welk. And uh, obviously if you remember correctly, the Welk will retreat inside its shell. And then if you accidentally, ha you know, have already selected to attack, um, the Welk will have gone into its shell and your characters will attack uh, the shell itself, which um, causes a, a massive uh, counterattack. So uh, kind of an interesting... Uh, you know, um, I, I don't know, um, similarity between the two games. Um, and there, actually, we've got a, a, a weapon there for Barrett. The, uh, what was that, the assault gun? So I'm actually going to equip that right away. And then here, so we've got actually 10 minutes in uh, to get out uh, before the, pa the place blows up. But uh, obviously, so all right, I just equipped the assault gun there. I wanted to uh, give him a little bit of an upgrade there. I don't know how much that's really going to... Uh, affect us but um you know typically at the beginning of the game our stats are so so low that uh minor upgrades like that probably don't make that much of a difference but hey you know what it adds up so uh being that we you know obtained it we may as well may as well get that on so uh oh and i actually forgot to mention so uh you know the some of the basics of the game uh you know one of those being uh, the limit gauge um, so once you've been attacked enough or take enough damage, your limit gauge will build, and um, that's really there's there's a couple there's there's a bit of uh, you know or some in and outs to that limit. 
Um, basically, that's really all you have to worry about, though, for the time being, is that um, the more damage you take, uh, the, you know, the, the more that uh, gauge will actually fill up. Um, and then it's interesting because uh, the way you obtain more limits in most cases, granted, not all cases, but um, in most cases, uh, the more enemies you kill, uh, that will unlock uh, higher tiers of limit breaks. Um, but, uh, so that's one way to obtain limits. Um, another way is actually to use the limits. And then a third way is actually through items. Um, you know, and again, that, that's, in, that's in most cases and that applies to most characters. Not all though. Um, but, uh, so actually here, Cloud actually has the Braver limit and Barrett has, what was that, Big Shot, I believe? And um, in order to get your uh, second limit break for tier, I'm going to call it tier one, uh, you have to use that limit, I believe it's eight times. So once Cloud has used Braver eight times, he will unlock his next limit. I don't remember right off the top of my head which one that is. Um, and, you know, and then, then he'll get his, his second one. Now, uh, in order though to get his, his first uh, tier two limit break, that's completely based on how many enemies you uh, defeat. And uh, what I mean by that, you actually have to land the killing blow uh, in order to uh, unlock those. Now, uh, for, the, for those to count. Um, here, Jessie, uh, ha her leg was stuck, and uh, you actually have to get her leg unstuck. Otherwise, you cannot, uh, you cannot leave. So uh, make sure you interact with her before you make your way out of here. Uh, but again, you know, maybe I'll do a little um, breakdown, I suppose, on limits, maybe a little guide. Uh, just know that, you know, the more enemies you defeat and the more limit breaks you use, um, you know, the more you'll obtain, essentially. Um, you know, that, I guess that's, that's just a general uh, overview of the limits, though. So again, there's, there's some ins and outs to it that you have to know, but, um, you know, for the most part... Uh, that's that's basically the case with those. Uh, but anyways, all right, so we're making our way out here now. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, I didn't really use any magic. I, I probably could have uh, sped, sped my escape up a little bit uh, by using, you know, a little bit of magic. But uh, I don't know. I just didn't feel like I really needed to. So I just used physical attacks all the way out. Or I should say basic attacks. So let's use the elevator here and make our way up. And I believe right here is where you'll get stuck if you don't have Jessie, because she's the one that has to uh, decipher that first code. And then here, Biggs uh, deciphers the second one. All right, let's get on. Um, to be honest, they re they give you plenty of time. I mean, even if you forget uh, to you know to get Jesse or to to get her leg unstuck, I, I think you have plenty of time to you know backtrack and um, and help her out. But uh, all right, boom, one, two. I was trying to count how many reactors there was there. I believe it's eight, but I didn't uh, actually wasn't able to count fast enough. Keep the planet going at least a little bit longer. All right, so mission accomplished. All right, now well, apparently I think this is where we have to make our way back to to base. And I don't. What's with the extra explosion there? That's kind of weird. <laughs> okay. All right, let's get out of here. Okay, well, let's get going then. Rendezvous at Sector 8 Station. Split up and get on the train. All right, so uh, earlier on there, Barrett says, you know, hey, don't ever travel together. So you notice there everybody kind of splits up and uh, they're all going to make their way uh, back onto the train. And then, you know, Cloud says, hey, wait, dude, what's the deal? You know, he kind of wants to get paid right away. And uh, Barrett says, ah, you know, hold up, right? You know, I'll, I'll get you paid once we get back to the, the hideout, so. All right, so here, um, I, I don't know if this uh, conversation matters a whole lot, but this is Eris. Um, I always, I pick those dialogue options in, in order to get to the whole, uh, 
you know, buying, buying the flower. Um, and at this point, I guess I would say this is a good time to bring up the fact that there's a, there's kind of like a little mini game, uh, with, with some of the characters. Uh, and what I mean by that is, um, basically I, I think it's commonly referred to as the love point game and, um, you get, you know, love points <laughs> based on your responses to some of the different characters. Now, uh, for instance, there with Eris, uh, I, I believe you get one love point by uh, buying a flower from her. And, um, you know, I don't know, to be, to be honest, it, well, it really only matters, I would say, uh, for one thing. There's, a, there's kind of a date scene later on in the game. And um, depending on how many love points you have, that will determine uh, how that... that uh, that little, I don't know if you'd say mini scene or uh, the series of events, I guess, uh, plays out. So, um, you know, there's there's actually some really good guides out there on, uh, you know, the, I, I would say the ins and outs of the Love Point game. I will try uh, my best to point out, uh, you know, instances where you can get points. But um, I'll be honest, I, uh, I don't really... Uh, have that great of a grasp on how it all works. So um, here, um, actually, so we get our cloud gets attacked by a bunch of these uh, these soldiers or MPs or whatever these guys are called, and um, you can actually fight every group of them. Uh, I fought the first one, but uh, to be honest, it's kind of a waste of time. So I just uh, basically avoided the rest of them, and then they're. <laughs> Cloud jumps on the train. Uh, for whatever reason, that reminds me of uh, Archer. There's a, there's, there's other Archer fans out there. I hope, but that uh, that animated series is amazing. But uh, anyways, um, all right. So uh, the 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 other four members of Avalanche here obviously made it. Or I should say the four members of Avalanche. Uh, Cloud isn't necessarily a member. Uh, he's more of obviously a, a mercenary, but uh, they they actually do ask him, or they're asking Barrett if uh, if they think that um, or if he thinks that Cloud will stick with them to the end. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, I, I would say that uh, Cloud, obviously, uh, being that it was a pretty. Uh, pretty successful mission there. You know, they're probably, I would guess, a bit impressed uh, with Cloud. And, uh, you know, to be honest, who wouldn't be? I mean, you know, yeah, he's, he's pretty cool. Uh, or, you know, acts like it anyways. And, uh, you know, I don't know, pretty, pretty, I don't know, cold at times maybe, but... Uh, you know, the, the good thing with Cloud is he's definitely dependable. Ooh, great back there. Yeah, so obviously they were, the rest of these Avalanche members were pretty, pretty impressed. Um, to be honest though, I mean, the rest of the, the Avalanche members there were the real ones that made that job a success. I mean, Jesse and Biggs, for one thing, opening up the, uh, uh, the the passcodes on the doors, and um, I, I well I don't know if I'd say that's maybe not fair to say uh, to Barrett or with Barrett he didn't really do much, <laughs> and in all honesty he may have uh, he may have not really been uh, or he may have actually been the least knowledgeable uh, of everybody there for that um, that uh, the mission, but uh, that being said he did. You know, kind of, uh, I, I don't know, oversee the whole works. So, I guess there's something to be said to that. Somebody's got to give the orders, right? But, uh, I like this. It looks like a, a guy in a suit. He's, like, complaining about uh, how he hates the last train. I assume that was some sort of uh, class based uh i don't know not not necessarily insult but i'm sure he he's not wild about uh having to ride the train with uh um i don't know these guys look maybe like 
lower class citizens? I don't know. That's my take anyway. Sound shop. Alright, so I think in order to progress here, you actually have to speak with Jesse. Uh, I'm not actually sure if you need to talk to the other uh, members of Avalanche here, but um, you have to uh, definitely have to speak with Jesse, and then we'll have to speak with uh, Barrett after. Uh, I actually did speak with Wedge here twice in a row. <laughs> I, I like that. I like his dialogue there. He's like, I, I felt like, or I feel like all of my life I've only been a sidekick, which I, is kind of funny if you've played the other. Obviously, Biggs and Wedge. Uh, you know, going off of, again, the Final Fantasy 3 or Final Fantasy 6, however you want to look at it. Um, I always I always, uh, I always, think of Final Fantasy 3 because the first time I ever played it was on the Super Nintendo. So so I often refer to uh, 6 as 3. But anyways, um, you know, obviously uh, Biggs and Wedge there at the very beginning of the game with Terra are essentially sidekicks. Kind of, you know, kind of, sort of. But uh, it is funny that he uh, makes that that comment here in uh, in seven but uh, all right so um, it's interesting here Jesse is uh, actually talking about how Midgar uh, is set up and how um, basically there's different sectors and she actually says that they used to be towns and that people just forgot their names so I look at this as you know kind of a you know a city that's grown um, and unfortunately you know has uh, become I, I would almost say so technologically in advanced that um it's actually become a bit of a danger obviously to the planet uh so uh i can't remember here where the uh and maybe i already missed it but um there's a there's a bit of a, a conversation it actually might be the the one coming up here with barrett but barrett does comment on how um you know people people live up on the plate uh, you know, that's that's where the, I would almost call them the rich people live. They, they live up above. Um, and then the poor people typically live uh, down on the ground. And, um, you know, again, he'll, he'll comment on that. I believe that's this conversation coming up here. But uh, Jesse also does mention there that there's a security scan. And I do like how she says, you never know what kind of creeps come out during the, uh, or when the lights turn off, which... That does sound super creepy, but uh, yeah, here's the conversation, if I remember correctly. The upper world, the city on a plate, yeah. So that whatever pizza that people underneath are suffering, the city below is full of polluted air. Okay, yeah, so not a real great place to live. And on top of that, the reactor keeps draining all of the energy. So Cloud asks, well, why don't people just move up to the uh, top of the plate? And uh, there, obviously, Barrett says either they don't have money or, you know, people just love uh, the, the soil or the, their land, he says. And then there, Cloud does say, well, yeah, I guess nobody chooses to be poor. So, kind of interesting insight as to Midgar, how it all works, and, um, you know, kind of how, how it's all set up. So, pretty interesting stuff. Uh, I'm coming up on the end of this commentary, though. We're going to uh, have a, a short little discussion here with uh, with Barrett, and I think he basically just yells at everybody and tells him to go back to the hideout. But uh, I'll I will make my save, and uh, we will continue on with the con commentary in the uh, the next video. So uh, as always, I hope this guide was helpful, and I hope you join me for more videos. Thanks for watching.